nosso próximo palestrante adora o Brasil. Quando ele já sabe né, do calendário do Red Hat Forum, ele já se programa, e eu desconfio, inclusive, que ele já programa outras atividades também aqui no Brasil, que o deixa muito feliz. Então, vamos receber com aplausos bem brasileiros, bem animados, o vice-presidente da Unidade de Negócios de Plataformas da Red Hat, Jim Totton. Seja bem-vindo. Bom dia. Ok, obrigado. And thank you. That's all my Portuguese today. I, I, I'm sorry. You know, uh, this morning I'm going to share a few thoughts about how our industry is changing. Much as Gilson said, uh, we've seen change in our society uh, through innovation uh, many times. And we think we're in a period of change again. We sometimes call the digital transformation. So this morning, I'd like to take a few minutes to share how we are thinking at Red Hat about this era of change, how it's driving the investments and the products that we're going to bring to the marketplace, and you'll hear more about today. And you know, I think in our IT industry, we've seen change before, right? Uh, how many of us remember actually working on a mainframe besides me? Maybe a few of us. Are mainframes actually still here? Yeah, actually. But we've seen mainframes, mini computers, personal computers, the internet, client server computing, mobile edge devices, um, I think we all see a variety of technologies that have created change. In fact, even today, I'm reminded that uh, my Edge device is telling me that there's a hurricane, Hurricane Jose, about to hit New York uh, and Boston. And my airline is also communicating with me today that maybe my flight tonight to New York might have a problem. Um, and so I think we begin to see that our experiences, um, sometimes in the business world, sometimes in our personal lives, are dramatically changed and affected uh, by the things we now think of as this digital transformation. So what does the world look like in terms of how to plan and how to build strategies in this world of digital transformation? Uh, maybe I'll need some meteorological help from Isabella uh, as we think about this hurricane. But I think from an IT perspective, we can all agree we've seen change before. Now, you know, 10 years ago, if I was uh, sharing some thoughts with you, we might be discussing how could IT's cost be reduced? Many companies were thinking about IT and IT organizations as just a cost of doing business. And it was about efficiency and finding ways to do more with less. But I think now we see that technology is key to creating the very value that businesses deliver um, in their capabilities. It's not just a cost. It is central to how the business behaves and delivers value. And it's not just the IT organization. In fact, technology can involve any part of a business or an organization, such as a government. And in fact, the organization um, could participate together with IT in the creation of the value. So you, here's a few industries here on the slide, but you can imagine your industry where technology is redefining what's expected in your particular industry. And so the question is, how do you make sure that you don't get disrupted? that you continue providing value um, and at a pace of innovation that is ever increasing. So as we think about the, the technology changes in this era, it's not just the IT organization, it's not just technology in the IT sense, but it's how the business behaves, what's happening in the marketplace, our governments, uh, create context and they themselves are consumers of technology and delivering value to citizens. 
All of these things have a rate of change, much as Gilson said, that not only is changing again, but it's happening faster and faster. You know, here are a couple of examples of companies and stories that we might recognize. Remember when photography, how many of us are, are hobby photogra photography people? We like to take pictures, right? Remember when photography was a chemical process? You purchased film, you had to get it developed. There was an entire ecosystem built around getting your photography and your pictures transformed through a chemical process. Kodak was a famous company in this space. Well, digital photography started off as something that was not as good as film and, and chemical process. Yeah, you could take pictures with your phone, but they were never as good as that expensive 35 millimeter camera. But today, that's not the case. Uh, in fact, chemical-based film processing is something that, for the most part, is gone. If we think about the financial industry, you know, imagine currencies such as Bitcoin uh, dramatically changing the entire idea of how currencies behave, how currencies can transcend country boundaries, government regulations perhaps. Some of the fundamental ways in which currency behaves could be disrupted and changed, and that has many implications to our financial industry as well as probably all of us and the way that we consume um, our economy and environment. Think about FedEx and shipping products and how retail behaves and the retail experience. Going to stores versus purchasing on the internet. It wasn't that many years ago where the idea of using your credit card on the internet to purchase a product was uh, not a very common thing. But today, clearly, there's been a disruption in the way the world consumes products in the retail space. Gartner uh, often provides insight through studies, and here's a couple of insights. Uh, the first is organizations that haven't uh, started to modernize their application base and their infrastructure are going to fall behind. We all generally have data centers where we've made technology investments over the last few years. Not many of us look like an Uber or an Airbnb that just started from a clean sheet of paper with a new IT infrastructure. Most of us have existing data centers and technologies and applications. But modernizing them, automating them, moving them so that they can participate in this digital world um, is a key activity for all of us here together today. And Gartner is suggesting that this is one of the most important things of not becoming disrupted. Also, one striking thing they offer here is that top performers are building more technology within their company than just using off-the-shelf solutions. Why? Because of that insight that technology now is the heart of creating the experience for many, many businesses. So just using a commercial off-the-shelf solution doesn't necessarily keep you as competitive as those in your market that you're trying to serve. So here's just a couple of quick examples in Latin America. You know, imagine the ability to have um, microcredits and loan types of structures that can reach a much broader economy, and Creditas uh, is example of a startup that created a banking solution that extends the idea of lending out to much larger and smaller uh, opportunities for people to invest capital in building businesses. Or Guia Salud, uh, is a place where a very traditional industry, publishing, this company is over 70 years old, is fully embracing the digital world and taking publishing to electronic publishing, in particular in the medical and healthcare area, and broadening the whole definition of publishing in new ways, rather than dying, 
as an old industry. Also, the ability to serve uh, our citizens and government agencies. Uh, we all realize that uh, dengue or Zika or threats like this um, have a, a source where they get created. In this case, mosquitoes and bugs, um, you know, in places where there's standing water. Well, this was an initiative to, to be able to find through social media uh, insights of where these places are happening so governments can take action and protect citizens. So when asked, where are you on your digital journey? Uh, the respondents uh, indicate here clearly that within an organization, the individual, we all see, we play an important role for our companies in defining where we're going to go. How are we going to use technology? But then when asked, are you ready? Are you already going there? About half are indicating honestly they either don't know how far they are along or they're not sure how they're going to get there. So what should we do? And hopefully this is some of the insight that we can share with you through discussions today. You're going to hear not only from Red Hat, but coming up soon you're going to hear from some customers and a little bit of their own story of their digital journey. But here, 90% of CIOs today recognize how important the use of technology is in their journey. And they clearly see that at this point, as I'm sharing, their future as a company depends on the use of technology, not just from a traditional IT perspective, but as central to the mission of the company. Now, as we again take a look at the rate of change and in innovation, the idea here on this slide is, is that innovation doesn't just continue like mainframes and mini computers and personal computers, but actually the rate of change also increases. Things go faster. Think about our phone example. How often are the applications on your phone getting an update? Maybe every day? Every week, there's new updates coming all the time. Does that sound like traditional IT? The way we used to plan our IT applications and rolling out new solutions, sometimes we used to talk about how many years we would be building the next generation of some new platform or product or technology. In this digital world, we can't wait years to roll out new solutions to our customers and our environments to be competitive. The rate of innovation and change and the tools that we use ultimately have to support us being agile and responsive to the needs of the business. So we think about that um, in a couple of different frameworks. You know, the first is how many of us get a lot of new budget every year? Probably not any of us. So we're all challenged to be effective with the budgets we have. So efficiency becomes important. So as we explore how to automate things, how to use management technologies, how to find ways to use the technology you already have in more effective ways. And then as we think about moving into being more productive in the way we transform business needs and requirements into solutions, so our productivity is another area. Here, we think about application architectures, containers, Docker, microservice architectures, OpenShift, platform as a service. These are some of the things we'll explore more during the day. Being agile in the infrastructure on which we deploy our solutions, on-premise solutions, off-premise in public cloud, hybrid, both environments, become part of the discussion. And finally, ultimately, it's the ability to build new applications very rapidly and deploy them for your business. So as we think about new emerging technologies like platforms uh, as a service or infrastructure as a service or containers, or even more recently AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, um, these are all things that are part of the vocabulary and technologies that are part of 
being a digital leader in an open hybrid world. So what's Red Hat's vision? Even though today will be a lot about technology, we actually think there are three important aspects of participating in the digital transformation era. And the first is actually not technology, it's culture. To change in an organization, you have to really think and embrace about the culture of your organization. Whether you're a business, a government agency, an academic environment, uh, all of us participate in an environment that has a culture. And a culture that is collaborative, transparent, open, we think are hallmarks of how to be effective in this era of innovation. The second is the processes that you use, not only as developers or as administrators and IT architects, but also the processes that we use in our businesses uh, are key to enable us to be agile, to be in this environment of responding rapidly to new requirements, to not get disrupted. And then finally, yes, technology plays an important role. So culture, we think, is critical. And clearly, Red Hat has embraced open source and the freedoms and liberty that comes with that, as Gilson was talking about. We also have made a decision at Red Hat many years ago that open source isn't something we do just a little bit. Everything Red Hat is investing in is open source based. Even when Red Hat has acquired another company, and it came with proprietary technology, we've open sourced all of that code to the community. Ansible is a good example. Just a week or so ago, uh, we had acquired Ansible a couple years ago. We were able to open source all of the Ansible code to an open source project and invite the community to join us in the continued development and enhance, enhancement of Ansible. So if you look at how open source works, there's actually probably more than a million projects out there. A project is where the innovation begins. At Red Hat, our engineers participate and develop code directly in the open source community. We're members of many, many projects. Often we take a leadership role in a given project area, and then we bring it through that innovation cycle. Uh, if you use Fedora as just one example on this slide, RHEL, our Linux operating system, starts life uh, in Fedora. But if you think about Fedora, there are probably now about 7,000 or more packages that make up Fedora, the operating system. RHEL is actually made up of a bit more than 3,000 packages. So the first thing is, we recognize not all projects are ready to be included in an enterprise class product. So that transformation from open source innovation into a product that you can run your business on, that we can run the New York Stock Exchange or the Tokyo Stock Exchange or airline reservation systems, truly mission critical solutions, this is a part of the, the work that Red Hat pursues as we think about open source. Gartner, again, has a comment here that most organizations at this point are using open source-based technology. As we think about it, it's not just the code also. Why is open source a good thing? Well, it's one kind of simple insight is this. If you have a single company and all of the code is proprietary, the, the speed at which you can innovate is limited just by your company's budget and ability to, to create new technology. When you collaborate together with others, you share ideas. You come up with better ideas. You have the combined investment of not just one company, but many companies participating together. So the innovation goes faster. It also creates industry standards. Standards that are not just a piece of paper or a document. Standards that are embodied in the code itself. And that promotes more innovation. So there's a bit of a virtuous cycle. 
So our approach at Red Hat has been always committed to open source for these reasons. Now, one of the aspects of that is we take your voice of what's important to you. What are the requirements you need in the products that Red Hat builds? And then we have that back to our engineers, bring that insight into the community, and then we drive the next generation of innovation based on your voice. So even if you're not participating in open source, you can influence open source through Red Hat because we'll listen to what you and the market require and respond to that in the way that we work upstream in the community. So basically the process is this. We engineer in the open source community. We then triage that code into building a product. We then put it onto a roadmap and a life cycle and we release it to you on a regular cadence. Let's just take RHEL as an example. RHEL has a 10-year life cycle. That means basically that the APIs and the binary interfaces for the kernel, we're going to support over 10 years. RHEL version 5 actually shipped in 2007. And a few years ago, we started reminding our customers that in 2017, RHEL uh, 5 was going to end of life. Well, here we are in 2017, and guess what? We actually have some customers who said, RHEL 5 was a great version, and we're still running uh, code just fine on it. Could you give us a few more years? So even 10 years wasn't enough. And so we've extended RHEL 5 out to 2020. And that means we've already decided that RHEL 6, which was going to end of life in 2020, is now extended out to 2023. So one of the values is, the innovation begins in open source. It becomes a product. We then make it available to our customers. We then support our customers. We create incremental value through the course of 10 years, maybe 13 in this story today. Um, and then we reinvest in the next generation of the technology. RHEL 7 released a few years ago, three years ago now, and is on its 10-year journey. And yes, we are currently working on RHEL 8, which is a few years away and not today's topic, but the innovation cycle continues. That story about RHEL is true for all of Red Hat's portfolio. They all have different life cycle and different details because they're at different places of maturity. Uh, RHEL has now been in the market for about 17 years, so we're pretty mature. Um, but this is the value creation model of open source innovation, but consumable in a way that you can then have confidence to deploy in mission critical data centers. So as you're thinking about this today and you're listening to the various presentations, give some thought to where are you in your culture, in your processes, in your organization. Are you looking at new methodologies like being agile or continuous integration, continuous development, iterative design and implementation? To what extent are you automating processes that can create efficiencies so that you can invest in newer technologies to be agile? Look at your development processes, but also the business processes, the automation, and of course security architectures we all know how important security is every day. So moving to an open technology-based environment uh, allows you to think about all of these attributes. In fact, you can participate in open source directly as well. We have some customers that join us in the upstream community and join us in the early innovation of future technology. So later during the day, you're going to hear about our portfolio. Um, this slide gives you a sense that we're investing in three key areas. Of course, at the beginning, I would say it's the developer and application platforms. In the end, everything is here to support applications and ultimately the business. So JBoss, our middleware technologies, all being containerized also so that you can build with OpenShift and a modern DevOps type of platform environment. 
The infrastructure area, as shown on the slide here, we think of four infrastructure environments. Bare metal servers are still important. Running virtual data centers as a guest, uh, operating system environment on VMware, on Red Hat's virtualization platform, Rev, or Microsoft Hyper-V host infrastructure, tr kind of traditional virtualization. We think about private cloud for those that want orchestrated infrastructure but want it on-premise. This is OpenStack. OpenStack is composed on top of the RHEL 7 kernel with the RHEL 7 hypervisor environment and then the latest OpenStack re release. For those of you interested in OpenStack, you probably know there's a new version of OpenStack every six months. And we reintegrate and compose that version on top of RHEL 7 every six months for our customers. Then the public cloud environment, uh, we support that with, of course, over 250 cloud providers, both the multinational globals as well as local regional cloud providers. And we've got partnerships you know, with Microsoft, with Amazon, Google, Softlayer from IBM, who's a key sponsor here at this event today. And then finally, management solutions like Agile, like Cloud Forms, like Satellite, like our Insight offerings you'll hear more about. These are the technologies in the third pillar of management. So applications, infrastructure, and then managing all of that. The RHEL operating system is the foundation to the story of infrastructure, and it's not a different version of RHEL for public cloud or physical servers. It's the same RHEL. So you know that 10-year life cycle story I shared? It's the same 10-year life cycle whether you're on a physical server or you're out running on Amazon or anywhere in between. So that means we've preserved choice and freedom for our customers. You can deploy anywhere from physical all the way out to public cloud. You, between public cloud providers, you can run on Azure, you can run on Amazon, you can run on Google. You'll find exactly the same operating system and APIs and the rest of our stack as well. So the key here, any application, any environment, and no lock-in. So how do we think about succeeding together in this era of digital transformation? Well, clearly, you'll see outside, we have a whole set of partner companies around us. T so together, it's not just Red Hat, but it's working with the industry, with hundreds and thousands of other companies that are partnered around our ecosystem, creating value that you can draw on for your solutions. And we have customers of many different types in many different industries. In fact, you heard from Gilson earlier about a number of key customers here in the Brazil economy, and you're going to hear more directly from some customers later in, in today's session. So this cycle of innovation with Red Hat, with the community, with our partners, with our customers, all based on open source, is the beginning of the story for today. This is how we see the marketplace in this next era of innovation. There's a lot of innovation and change ahead, and I suggest, just like the past, the innovation will not only continue, but it will accelerate. And we invite you to participate with us in that. So let's, let's collaborate together. Uh, let's not just build a solution, but let's really accelerate this next era of the digital transformation together. Whether you bring your voice of requirements to Red Hat for us to carry into the open source community, or perhaps participate in the community yourselves. But I hope you find today exciting, listening not only to Red Hat, but also to some customers share where they are on this digital transformation journey. So thanks. Bon dia.